Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first reading we'll look at is Luke 1 through 2. I love the Gospel of Luke. It is so good. So good. Uh, great for preparing for Christmas because this is how God prepared for the first Christmas, the first advent of Jesus, which also then prepares us for the final advent of Jesus. Uh, notice, notice, for example, when he says to Zechariah in 1 verse 13, the angel says to Zechariah, do not be afraid. Do you notice how that's a common phrase that angels say, you know, it's it's not necessarily the first words they say, but they often say, do not be afraid. Kind of makes you think seeing an angel would make you afraid. Yeah. But he says, your prayer has been heard. Did you see last week, you know, when we looked at Luke chapter three, uh, which is also in your, in your booklet, you know, they, the, the people in 315, while the people were filled with anticipation and they all wondered whether John the Baptist was the Christ, the Messiah, God's chosen one to be their king. Uh, you know, they're all wondering, they're all on tenterhooks, whatever that means. I, so one of the other things uh, you'll notice about the gospel of Luke 1 through 2, a lot of people bursting forth in poetry. You know, Zechariah bursts forth in poetry. Mary does. Uh, Elizabeth breaks forth into poetry. It's almost like we're going around and, you know, watching an opera and somebody's going to burst into song. Or like watching Enchanted. Uh, so, you know, I I'm assuming they didn't sing, you know, and the angels, uh, you know, were reminded that they did not sing. They spoke. Uh, but I kind of wonder, you know, if that word has fudge and, you know, can an angel speak and it'd be so overwhelming, you don't know what they did. All you know is like, whoa, we should like go check this out. I love the juxtaposition of, sorry, the setting of side by side of uh, Zechariah and Mary. And then also you could do the angels, you know, there's these angelic confrontations with Zechariah, with Mary, and with the angels. And if you look at them side by side, you know, there's similar phrases like, do not be afraid, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Interesting with Mary, that's not the first words. It's, he's like, hey, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, uh, oh, forgot the, the little, little too far. Uh, you know, he says, greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. And she's like, oh. No, no, she was greatly troubled and began to wonder what this greeting might mean. And then he says, oh, sorry, forgot my most important line. Do not be afraid, which, by the way, not good advice. Uh, you know, never tell, well, why don't you just calm down? Uh, you know, Zechariah 1 verse 12, he was visibly shaken and seized with fear. And then the angel just goes on. Uh, note the note the difference in the question because you know I, I didn't talk to a pastor about this, and he seemed to think that they were uh, Mary and Zechariah were asking the exact same question. But to me, they're so radically different. Zechariah in one eighteen says, "How can I be sure of this?" You know, you promised me a child. How can I be sure of this? Because, you know, I'm pretty old and my wife is pretty old. He knew the birds and the bees. You know, uh, first of all, she was barren, never had a child. And second of all, she hadn't had her period for quite a long time. So Zechariah, knowing the birds and the bees, says, how can I be sure of this? We get back to Gabriel's response in a minute. Uh, but with with Mary, I, I love this with Mary. You know, she's greatly troubled. She's filled with wonder. He says she's going to have a baby. And she goes, how will this be? How will this be since I have not had sexual relations with a man? Or doesn't a normal translation say virgin? She knew the birds and the bees. Uh, you know, it's speculated that Mary was a young woman, you know, like she had just flowered, you know, just reached uh, physical maturity. 
because that was about the time that they would get married way back when. I, I don't know how certain it is that a woman would get married just as soon as she reaches puberty, uh, but I'm assuming pretty likely from what I've heard. Uh, so what is she, you know, 13 years old, 14 years old? Maybe. I think they may have come to puberty a little bit later than people do nowadays. You know, food and healthcare and stuff in our water. Uh, so, you know, she knows the birds and the bees. And so she's told, oh, you're going to have a baby. And she's like, you know, I'm not married and I've never had sexual intercourse. So, you know, uh, are you asking me to, you know, like do something with someone? And Gabriel's like, no, got this covered. And he kind of breaks forth into poetry. I love that. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Love the poetry. And by the way, the, notice the parallel between the Holy Spirit and the power of the Most High God. That's one of the code words Luke uses for the Holy Spirit. When he talks about the power of God, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, I love that Gabriel's response to Zechariah's question. It's like, how can I be sure that God can do such a thing with an old person? Because, you know... I only have the stories of what Hannah and uh, Sarah and Isaac's wife, Rebecca. You know, it's only part of our huge tradition of God intervening in barren people's lives and giving them children, you know. So, you know, who am I to be a part of that tradition? Uh, but I love Gabriel's response. Dude, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of Almighty God. Tell you this? I wasn't here and told, put up with your garbage. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd love to know your, you know, uh, interpretation of his tone of voice in saying this. All right. Uh, you'll notice, uh, you know, Mary, Mary breaks forth into poetry. And we were talking about this at the women's Bible study. Uh, you know, we could say this is a Holy Spirit thing. Uh, there's some thoughts of, you know, I'm assuming that Luke actually talked with Mary. Uh, you know, when he says, I investigated all of these things, this sure sounds like it's from Mary's perspective. So, you know, Luke is talking to Mary. He's like, so, Mary, can you tell me about the birth of Jesus? And she's like, oh, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for the Lord has done great things to me. Uh, you know, did she compose that on the spot by the power of the Holy Spirit? Uh, or, you know, was this something that, you know, she would have composed later? Or was it something she composed on the way to go see Elizabeth? Did she compose it on the spot? And I'll just say this as far as the Holy Spirit's work. The, the Holy Spirit often works, you know, from what I see, uh, he works with what you've got. Which is to say, if you're immersed in the word of God, the Holy Spirit will have you like quoting scripture and putting pieces together from various scriptures. Uh, I am convinced that the Jews were immersed in the word of God. You know, they would have heard the prophets over and over and over again. The Psalms were their songbook. So for a person to you know break forth into poetry and just kind of pull scripture, you know, passages and scriptural language and scripture style you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't need to do a whole lot of work there. Then you got the, the shepherds. I, and, you know, I, I love their response. Uh, the shepherds. Hey, um, let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place that the Lord has made known to us. Yeah, good idea. You know, you just saw an angel choir, you know, announce... Uh, gotta love, gotta love Simeon. If you've never seen Simeon's moment, my wife would love to show it to you. She loves that picture. She paid more for the frame than for the picture because she loved it so much. Uh, so this is in chapter two. Why was it going back to chapter one? Uh, I love Simeon's song. Oh, man. We sing it, you know, Lord, let, now let us have thy servant depart in peace. Uh, 
So he was promised to see the Christ, the Messiah, God's anointed king, before he died. Now, according to your word, sovereign Lord, permit your servant to depart in peace, that is to die, which I'm assuming we're not saying when we, you know, sing it at the end of our service, you know, in the, the nunc dimittis. Yeah, that's Latin for now let us go or depart. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Now, whenever you hear words like, you know, Christ and Lord and Messiah and Son of God, uh, Savior, those are all words that are associated with the emperor cult and with the king cult. Uh, they're associated with kings and rulers. You know, the ruler is the one who saves you. The ruler is the one who brings peace. Uh, the, war, the, the, the king is the one who brings good news. Uh, it's always, it's often associated with the royal, royal cult, royal announcement, royal proclamation. And so when he says, my eyes have seen your salvation, he's saying, he's looking at Jesus and saying, I've seen your salvation. I've seen your king come to rescue us. Okay. That's what they're looking for. When they talk about salvation, they're looking for God to show up. That's the Jews. Uh, they're looking for God to become king. 231, you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. And note that theme in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the nations, the peoples, the Gentiles, huge theme in this gospel. You know, I think in chapter three, when he says, uh, you know, God can raise up children to Abraham uh, from these stones. I believe it was common to refer to Gentiles as, you know, being on the level of a stone. It's like, you know, got to Jewish man up here, you know, right below that, you got a Jewish woman, and then you've got, you know, the Gentiles and other dogs and, you know, the stones, you know, they'd be way down below where I'm putting my hand. A light for revelation, and I love revelation. You know, we, we have to have this stuff revealed to us. It has to be done from outside. Uh, this is the limitation of science. And so whenever you run into that claim, well, you know, science has disproven the resurrection of Jesus, or science has disproven that miracles can happen. It's like, well, no, you can't even talk about miracles. You cannot talk about things from the outside of nature. You know, you can't, you cannot, uh, science cannot measure God and what God does in time, in history, in nature. It just can't, uh, because it's from outside of nature, or if you want to call it supernatural, Let's just talk about it, you know, God being outside of nature and not measurable by science. Uh, but it has to be revealed to us from the outside. You know, the important stuff has to be revealed. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, the nations. I would translate that nations pretty much every single time, even when it's awkward. But Gentiles is just a Latin word meaning nations or people groups is really a better translation, I think. You know, ethnicities, that's ethne, the Greek word ethnic, ethnicities, people groups, and for glory to your people, Israel. And then he, oh man, this is so good. In verse 34, poor Simeon and poor Mary, she's listening to this. And it's like, uh, Simeon says, now listen carefully. This child is destined to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be rejected. And, you know, can you just marry wide-eyed? It's like, give me my baby back. He's eight days old. It's like, are you holding his head up? You know, you need to hold under his head. Don't let his head flop around. You're kind of old. Don't drop my baby. <laughs> oh, man, I cracked myself up. Verse 35, indeed, as a result of him, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. You know how scary that is to have the thoughts of your hearts revealed? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I notice people really, really don't like the thoughts of their hearts being revealed. You know, uh, and I kind of wonder, you know, people who think that they're a good person, it's like, you know, one day the thoughts of your heart are going to be revealed. You know, better to get it out now when you can be forgiven. And, and indeed, and indeed, a sword will pierce your own soul as well. And then Anna is totally awesome, but she doesn't get lines. Did Mary not remember what Anna said? But notice what she was doing. You know, she was 
waiting for the redemption of Israel, you know, waiting for God to show up. And with that, that's a good good place to end uh, because we got to the cross, you know. Did you notice that? We got to the cross all the way in Luke 2 because of Simeon, because Simeon is totally awesome. Yeah.